Shonen Jump. It's our quarterly, Yay! quarterly state of Shonen Jump. Uh, I'm eating dinner. Uh, Party Champs is going to get dinner. Uh, I think yeah, I'm up. here, but I'm also like eating, so I might be mute for a good amount of this beginning part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Luke, I think you've already had dinner because it's probably like 3 a.m. over there. <laughs> Well, it's 2 a.m., so... I was closer this time. I'm learning. Yeah, you're learning. You're learning. Uh, and Tyler's probably also grabbing some damn. Because uh, it's 9 o'clock our time, basically. Um, yeah. Um, it's been an interesting quarter. Um, I, I will say, like, this... This has probably been... Like, I got caught up on everything that I read. Um, I've been... Yeah, so been out and about doing things outside of YouTube while still trying to balance YouTube. It's, I think this might be the strongest quarter of chapters we've had uh, this year. Like, I will, I will admit that. Uh, so oh, absolutely. Some good new uh, contenders. We did say farewell to quite a few series as well. I believe that you've tallied it up at eight. Yeah, the eight that, from what I'm looking at, um, are each no, each no say family's deadly sins. Um, Ichigo Keys Under Control, Fabri Fabricate 100, Tamaku Cinema, Do We Try, uh, oh no, it was actually six, sorry, sorry, because I think we talked about, did we talk about Tokyo Demon Bride Story last time, and Ginka and G Gulan? I want to say we did. I think yeah, yeah, so, did. yeah, so it will be, it'll be, um, It'll be six then. It were, so that was my bad. It'll be six. Because I know we did talk about Earth Child and Super Smartphone. Like, I remember the rant on yep. Earth Child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, for for sure, everything from, you know, Safe Family, Deadly Sins. Uh, yeah, it's six. Yeah. And as someone who read all of those, like, a lot of those axes were pretty well deserved. I mean, either, I yeah. mean, guess we can talk about them individually, but I think, like, either, well, one, they didn't meet sales, obviously, but I also feel like most of them, they didn't properly get their stories started, and or they went off the rails real quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the thing that I feel like hurt me the most was Tamaku Cinema. <laughs> Yeah, I know you enjoy that one, but I, I really feel like for that series, they didn't properly properly utilize their supernatural elements or mystery. They really just wanted to tell, like, a fun short story about, like, kids making movies, which is a nice idea. But I also don't think they, they did quite enough with their supporting cast. They didn't really go into... Uh, well, they did go into the movie-making process. I'll give them that. That was nice. And I, the romance was there but it wasn't super emphasized so yeah i don't i think the series just didn't really make the best use of what it had but what it did do was still nice but it it just didn't sell also and also yeah. like the controversy with the ghost paradox writer was also with that oh series my. yeah but that's the but here's here's the thing with that like why like he was literally a ghost writer doesn't matter to the internet. No, I get it, but still, it's kind of funny. This is a controversy with the like, last I wonder, time. Do, do they have ghostwriters in Japan? Well, actually, well, they, they, actually, they do, because technically, Berserk is being ghostwritten now. Yeah, ghostwriting is just a concept everywhere, I'm sure. Not so much ghostwritten as being carried by his staff. There's and you don't really need writing the thing. Like most of Drake's music, but uh, um, skewered in the game. Um, but like, there's like in the arts, it's a thing that happens a lot. I don't understand why there's a massive controversy that it's something that exists, but I, I understand like the plagiarism aspect of it being right, like. It kind of teetered into like, is this plagiarism or is this like true ghostwriting? Even though it's like, on the whatever. Um, 
it's beyond it's, the grave beyond the grave but not beyond the uh it's also made from the like the axe dimension so like funny it was a meme um and then ice head gills got the meme now um yeah <laughs> yeah it's transcended the manga to become like just the ultimate meme <laughs> I, I saved that to use anytime something get axed, by the way. Yeah. 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 Um But I think but the yeah. biggest standout of this entire order has to be the meme that is Kagura Bachi. Oh, absolutely absolutely. Like question why was it why was it Scanlation first chapter? I, I don't know. I have know. a conspiracy theory. Uh, I think they did that intentionally to drum up fucking uh, publicity for it so it would do better because they don't really have a tradition after all these and they wanted to actually get something out there. Yeah, the, look, look, uh, looking at his Wikipedia page, um, upon release, Kokoro Bachi surpassed series such as Spike's Family, Dragon Ball Super, and Boruto on manga's on manga Plus's popularity ranking. Its sudden popularity amongst English readers became the subject of numerous internet memes, which uh, many ironically consider it to be the inheritor of the big of the big three. Um, but everyone just. Stop it with the big three. Uh, like, is this the new big three? Is this the new? Is this the next big three? Like, there's only going to be one big three. Now here, here's the thing. Like, the the new big three to the internet is the shit that's been around for fucking five years, though. Like, like anytime that the new big three is a, a fucking phrase, it's like my hero and JJK and anything. It's not new series. Like that is a current big three, maybe, but not. It's also just a concept that was for that time. Like, the focus for the magazine for the longest time was still on One Piece and on Bleach. So when Bleach ended, it went shifted to My Hero. You know, it's not like passing the torch, so to speak. It's a concept that should have stayed at 2010's era. Well, technically before that. Um, but I, I just... I don't understand the hype behind Kagurabachi as somebody that read only the first chapter. Because I'm like, okay, is this any good? Is this really worth all the hype? And it wasn't to me. Like, it's it's Bleach and Demon Slayer and, like, edgy emo kid. Which you would think, as the emo, I would enjoy. But not really. Like, it's just, it just plays it so safe in its own sense in that first chapter. It's treading plot threads that I feel like have been done a million times. And I guess that's what they want. To have a safe bet to keep going in the magazine instead of, like, risky series. But it just ain't doing it for me, um, which is unfortunate because I like swords. I like the 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 fucking the concept behind it. It just felt stale. Um, maybe I should read the other ten chapters that are out. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've only really skimmed through skimmed through it, so I'm like, eh. Okay, I can talk but, about it. I'm up to date. Uh, in my opinion, so, it's just okay. I feel like, as someone who's caught up, it absolutely lives up to the hype. It just kind of sucks that the hype started out with memeing, which kind of makes it hard for other people to gauge. And so I understand the hesitancy, but I can say it's like, it'll if it survives, it's going to survive on its own merits. And I think a lot of the reason that it's got popularity is because it emulates a lot of what De uh, Demon Slayer did in terms of like sword fighting and having like a a mystical element involved along with kind of like taking place in a Japan like society. But I think what makes Kagura Bachi um, like good is one, it's action paneling is amazing. Like the way it does flow of action is probably like only surpassed by like in the magazine by like Sakamoto days, which is like King edit and like a K and yeah, actually that might be it. Like MHA kind of sucks at it now. <laughs> But, um, yeah, Kagurabachi has great action, and the comedy is kind of decent. It's not super great, but the art, of course, is really, really good. And on top of it, I think it also has, like, a very decent amount of world-building already established. And it quickly got me in, uh, endeared into its character cast. Um, and I think that's good because most series, like, it takes a while for me to really start caring about anybody. But I already care about, like... 
most of the central characters. Like, some of them almost died recently, and I was actually like, oh, okay, no, people could actually die in this series. Luckily, like, it wasn't, but some are going through fates worse than death. Like, we already have an Aerie in our series, um, Aerie from uh, MHA. Yeah, uh, I was... So, it, it's that, like, the little... Because I saw, like, that little girl character. Is that the Aerie character you're talking about? Uh, yeah, Char is yeah. Uh, their name. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but I'm just going to reference okay. him at Char. But okay. yeah, so the villain is, I think, the best thing they have right now because they did a good job really setting up how messed up the current antagonist is. Because what they did is they had like like this random bad guy that they basically dealt with in like chapter two, maybe. Like basically just like a random goon just to show off how powerful our MC is. And then he was going to have like, there was a chapter where they looked like he was going to have a turnaround, become a good guy, like make up with his family. It was actually really sweet. I actually thought, oh, wow, we're going to have a reoccurring character right here. But then he just gets like murdered in like the worst way where he thought he had killed, uh, where he thought his sister was dead, but it, surely she was still alive and the villain tricked him into killing her. Like that was so messed up. And then on top of that, he kidnapped a child and is now brutalizing her for experiments. Like, and it's oh, so no. nice tell, because... Uh, don't tell me it's as screwed up as what Asa did to, uh, Asa did to um, Subami and Mission Yosakura. I mean, I think that's worse just because that's his actual daughter. So I won't say it's as bad as that. But it's like, uh, it's basically like overhaul and airy is like the best comparison. Oh, no. Yeah, so like we have such a great, like hateable antagonist. And the best part is he thinks... He's what he's doing is like the right thing. He has like such a messed up philosophy that connects back to the protagonist's father. And I really like that how like the protagonist's father has led our MC to go on this revenge quest, but he has also led some very psychopathic bad guys to use like his legacy for like the worst reasons. And it's good. I very much enjoy Kagurabachi. I'm glad it's I hope it survives. Because like I know Vex had said that um, like the current batch is really strong and I would agree, but if you look at the table of contents, it, they are not doing super well. Like MMA, um, Mama Yuyu, and uh, one other series, Two on Ice, they're all like ranking pretty low on the table of contents. But Mama Yuyu is getting a color paid, so maybe it'll survive. That's what's so weird about it, right? Like the DLC, like, it's supposed to be like this like popularity but at the same time like it doesn't really reach consistency anymore right like you used to be able to like use a way to determine like if your favorite series is on the brink of cancellation but it doesn't seem to matter uh in the, like the last couple of years since yeah cause uh just gonna say cause mama you you is at 15 uh this week but next week it's getting a color page yeah, and I think Mama Yu is pretty decent. I was a little worried about it in the beginning because it didn't really have a good direction. I was afraid it was another Earth Child with, like, a good first chapter, but, like, a bad follow-up. But it's actually been pretty decent. I like its sort of reverse isekai circumstance it has. Um, yeah, I I read the first chapter to, uh, today um, in prep for this, and, yeah, what I saw was uh, it was it was all right. I do, I do like this idea because it's like uh okay much as we much as we've uh shared on in the past of um with promise seven i i did like the idea of like trying to have the concept of the humans and the demons living together and this series just kind of runs with that because it it very much reminds me of like the flashback with that girl with the dog in promise neverland if that makes sense of being like raised by a demon <laughs> It's kind of interesting. Yeah. And, I mean, they do have, like, some decent, like, characters, too. I think what it struggles in is the fact that a lot of the chapters have so far just been introducing characters and concepts 
that it's been so much build up, but the progress itself has been kind of slow. Because right now, like the last chapter was just like giving a backstory to a character and did a really good job. We basically just had like one of the like demon lords, like ally demon lords, show up and be like, oh, I had this bipolar mom and it really messed me up so much. And now it like I'm just trying to find some connections with other people. And I'm like, OK, I'm on board with this character. And then another demon lord it was just like a very interesting twist antagonist, but I think their motivations might be a little more complex when we dig into it. I'm hoping that one survives. Shows the most promise for Laura. To me. I would agree with that. Uh, I should probably just. Um. Yeah, and I know that like you probably got annoyed with the memeing, but I think it's starting to calm down a little. Yeah, yeah it definitely, it, was, it definitely is. When it was trying to seemingly like pull out a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and dominate the rankings permanently, that's guys. There's no way this fucking new series is better than One Piece of all things, right? A oh well, no, but I think that. I think it's also just really not the series' fault. Like, even Shonen Jump is like, we don't know what's going on <laughs> overseas, but we're glad you like our stuff. Yeah. Well, like, I'm sure fair, the author's just happy, but I, it, it's not like they were trying to be annoying. <laughs> to be fair, it has dropped in the rankings significantly. That's yeah, but that's also just because it was artificially inflated. It's not due to a lack of quality. I promise you that. Okay, I'll definitely, I'll definitely um, go back and give it another chance. Good dear. Um yeah. And I'm still not sure if I want to give two on ice a shot, just because. I mean, it's not really usually my kind of thing, but then again, I got into blue box despite it not being my kind of thing. So yeah, if it I, survives, I'll uh, give it a read. Yeah, but I, I don't know if it'll survive. I read the first three chapters. I was kind of like, you know what? Yeah, I'm. Kind of digging with this, but I'm gonna wait until it builds up a bit before um continuing it. Okay, so I guess we don't have too much to say on that one. Yeah. Um now uh now I don't know if you read it, but the new series that came out, um okay oh, Green Greens. Yeah, okay, it is golf. It is golf, I'll admit, I'll admit, but I do like the chemistry between the two characters and the shops. I love the fact that the female has this kind of like uh had a yeah yeah that was it like um even though i even though i um stopped reading it because it was just too weird she kind of reminds me of like um momo from don to don with just like her sarcastic quips and just being like Ugh, why do i have to pull with you type character okay I mean, I might give it a try. I, I read the author's last work, Beast Children, which was okay. So I might read this one. I don't know. I'm not really a sports guy. but Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm very hesitant to try too many new series that don't, like, fit my personal taste just because if if I do end up liking it and they die, I'm going to feel extra bad. Yeah, fair, fair enough. But oh. also as well, just I just love saying the name of the name of the um, series. Green, green, greens. <laughs> Eat your greens, children. <laughs> Hey, there's only there's only one green I'm I'm interested in. Yeah, same. <laughs> and, oh my god! I, oh my god! The male has green hair. I'll be so happy when I can. But anyways, uh, there is I think there's another new series. Up, like I don't know if it, it was a new series. At least it was new to the jump app. Uh, IG uh, started reading this uh, hockey manga called uh, Dogs Red. Oh, yeah, I think oh, that's, Jump Plus. that's Jump Plus. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, I haven't read it yet, but I've heard good things. It's it's good. Not really my thing. I'm not a big sports person. Yeah, but hey, it mentioned Sidney Crosby, and. I grew like I grew up in the in the Pittsburgh Penguins area. And well, Sidney Crosby is like the most famous Penguins player. Yeah. Well, to be fair, with a series like that, that could um, potentially work even if you're not a sports fan because of just because of it being hockey and how violent hockey can be at times. Oh yeah, I remember seeing a clip on Reddit where it was like 
uh, there was this big fight on on the ice rink. Uh, just all, I'm convinced all the, the entire damn team was getting into a fight, and everybody just got like sent off. Yeah. So I feel like with that type of series, that's that could focus if they really, really want to focus more on it being like an action sports series as opposed to just a general sports series. It could work because there could be like a like an entire chapter where you just have two two characters um, racing around the ring and just whacking each other with their sticks, but make it out to be like the most intense sword fight ever. That would be interesting. Not to mention, like, uh, the phys- like the sheer physicality of hockey. And, like, the, like, whole, like, two players just beating the shit out of each other. I feel like that could really make for some good uh, character drama. Yeah, so I'll I'll definitely be I'll definitely be reading reading to get. I feel like with sports series, what they really have to do is like, okay, what um what are some of the best aspects of the of the sport? Like with hockey, like okay, it's very violent. Let's just up the violence. So does that mean if we if we get another uh soccer soccer anime anime will be. Uh, getting a a bu- a bunch of drunk of drunken fans fighting behind the bleachers. <laughs> yeah. Please. No. 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 What? No. What will What will happen is that it will be about it will be about someone who doesn't give a who doesn't give a shit about soccer, football, whatever you want to do, and and it's literally like on a match day near my house where you cannot where because it's like i live near a stadium for like one of the big football players uh, football teams here and on match days you cannot get anywhere on the roads and you're just there when all the fans are like there and you're just like just let me pass let me pass i just want to see a series where someone hulks out at the crowds that are just going across the road that'd be funny So I think uh, another th- we talked about the series that got axed and some of the new ones yeah. at this point. I feel like I one of the want... oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to also, I guess, bring up like series that uh, have survived that like we weren't sure if whether or not they would because like while there were a lot of axes, there were also like survivors of this time period, and I guess. Uh, I'll technically bring up like MMA as like it's sort of technically surviving at this point because the sales haven't been good. But yeah, and it's at it's, the bottom. It's, yeah, but it is continuing for now, um, and I think it's actually like a really fun like. Um, even though we just said we're not real sports guys, I think this is a pretty good MMA series. Like the way it does its fights. And but I also think the recent chapter, I'm not sure if it's like rushing towards the end or if it's just setting up a lot to come forward. It it really depends. I think the author's just hedging their bets. Uh, so like news extra system is hangers on. Um yeah, Cypher was like in the clear last time we filmed this, I believe. But like Kill Blue just is not interesting to me. Exorcist has a lot more reading. Safe-ish. Um, well, with Kill Blue, think... right? Go, go ahead. Okay, uh, what I want to say with Kill Blue is, like, I didn't really feel in the beginning, but I'm glad I kept up with it. It's, like, a really fun, like, grounded story, but at the same time, I think... One thing I've noticed with the recent trends is just, like, Kill Blue is, like, one of those series that really tries to, like eat its cake and have it too, where it likes to put absurd situations, but then kind of joke about the absurd situations, which is fine, except for the fact that one of the absurd situations, the fact that we have like a grown man in a middle school and some of these, there's like romantic connections between these middle schoolers and him. And he's like, I am not interested in kids, but also I am caught up in all this junk <laughs> And it's a very creepy <laughs> in well, like no, a way where it's, it's like, kind of it's kind of like he doesn't go looking for the trouble. The trouble finds him. Yeah, which ultimately makes you feel like very bad for the old man getting sexually harassed by the preteens. <laughs> what? Or or or, yeah. or, or no, having to like fight. that's actually what happened in the newest chapter. Or having to fight a literal man, baby. 
Oh, uh, yeah, actual man, baby. That's a whole other thing. But I do think the characters are good. I really like Tenma, especially. He's a great character. Yeah. So we have sexual assault chant. have literal yell bullshit going on. Well, technically, technically not not a b not a b d l more like it's like i'm i'm gonna suck on a pacifier all the time and you I, I, why you ask you just won't understand until you try it i yeah i don't get it but we'll i don't get, get it either. Actually later uh and i also glad cypher academy has managed to survive for a whole year um, and at this point, it's basically a staple of the series, like Akane and everything else. So I'm glad that's still around. I still, like, the recent chapter was actually nice because I understood what was going on because I was talking about the prisoner's dilemma. But even when I don't understand what's going on, I really like the character cast they've built up. Um, and, yeah, it's like, a I think, a series that is going to be in jump for a good while now. So overly convoluted. I, I get why it's overly convoluted. You feel dumber. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just this author style. But like, uh, Monogatari stuff, I at least understand. Oh, shit. But like, this just makes me feel like, I don't know. It's weird. Um, I'm very... Uh, I'm not a fan of Akane. Uh, I've said it, but like, I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad it stayed because very beloved series. I wish something else would have stayed. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what do you wish had stayed? Like, what's the biggest one that you're like, oh man, really? I wish P6 would have gotten the fate that Akane got. You know, that would be pretty good, but I will say the author's current work has been like, honestly, probably more to his like. If, like, craziness. I think it's less, like, as emotionally based story, but it really fits with his, I am can do whatever I want. It all works out for him this time. Um, yeah, wishing the best. Because I am enjoying his Magical Girl series. Um, I, still, I, think we, I still need talk, to give oh, that one, one a chance. The, his, his, the P6 author's I, new series. I'll be honest, it's hard to recommend it to you, Luke, just because it has, like, a lot of the problems that we talked about in our, oh, in our oh, old podcast. Oh, 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 oh. I think it fits better manga? here. Huh? No, no, it's a, a music ma- manga? it's a magical girl no, no, manga. It, ah. Yeah, but he, he his style of, like, having really messy layouts and dialogue, but it, it just really works with the chaotic elements of uh, an abstract stuff of magical girls. But, but anyway, no, um, um, but anyway, um, I'll just say this quickly about Arcane. The reason, uh, and I've said this before, the reason why I love it so much is because it's a manga that actually caters to what I enjoy in life. And I appreciate it's a very unique kind of story in Shonen Jump. I always appreciate like the stories that try to be different, like Doctor Stone and Akane and Promise Neverland. Um, uh, I, uh, I guess we can talk about anime adaptations. Now it's like another thing that recently got a lot of announcements. Like Blue Box has like an anime coming out now. Um. So <clears throat> I know these ones aren't um regular Shonen Jump. I I have become quite fond since we last. Well, I can definitely recommend those. Uh, oh, yeah. And I can add on to those recommendations. Same for me with Shoujo No. Like, Wild Strawberries art is just top tier. Shoujo Noel's world. Oh, fucking. Um, I, I've always been, like, a fan of, like, the abstract art style. It's one thing I didn't really play in uh, Tokyo Ghoul as well. So, Tokyo Ghoul, like, body horror style. Um, but um, not a fan of Trojan X. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, I'm the opposite. I love Trojan X. Probably one of my favorite ongoing things. But I think I just like that other style of writing as well. Uh, but like you're right. Like um, Blue Box got an anime announcement. 
Uh, Don Don got an anime announcement, which makes me very, very, very happy. Uh, as uh, yeah, like, I think Don Don is going to be the next like big thing, honestly. Yeah, but Once actually, it. now that we're talking about anime adaptations, like I've been saying, I've been saying for ages that Witch Watch, like, wow, you deserve an anime adaptation. But no, something else that's actually been out longer than Witch Watch at the moment, Sakamoto Days. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when you were complaining about that, but all the Sakamoto Day fans are like. What's going on? And it's honestly one of the best uh, in the magazine, honestly. Like, I think it's the second best for me after JJK, but it's been consistently amazing for a while. And the fact that it has no anime is weird. Because it outsells, yeah. like, uh, I think, uh, but Blue Box. But my fear. Torture Princess got a fucking anime before Sakamoto Days. My theory, my theory on what's going on with both Witch Watch and Sakamoto Days is that. I feel that because we've got so many of the big series ending, they're kind of holding on to those two series to be like, we need to have these be the, the be the absolute staples at the moment. Because I don't think Sakamoto Days is author has announced that it's ending anytime soon, have they? No, not at all. No, and, and which watch is ending. and which watch is author has said like, yeah, I'm gonna do this for as long as I for as long as I feel like it. So I feel like the the jump are really edge to like okay we've got to keep the at least these two series because they they i feel like they do the uh, out of all the series that are currently that are not like the big series they do the best out of all of them like so does Don. i mean but that's jump plus well i mean Don John like is a different magazine but i think he means within like but i that would just drive up popularity like a good a- anime but like if it's trash like trash they Risk it. Like you might have something in that. Um, I mean, it could just be that there are studios working on it, but they just haven't announced it. Because Witch Watch, I think, is getting an announcement soon based on current rumors. Um, and like Don Don, like I, those developer, those people working on uh, Scott Pilgrim before they got on Don Don, so. It could just be that the studios behind Sakamoto Days and Witch Watch are just like busy with other projects. I figure David Production. Oh, uh, the Sakamoto. studio behind Scott Pilgrim's doing Don Don. Yeah. Oh, mm. nice. Well, okay, know. okay, I'm definitely interested now. Yeah, um, it's the perfect fit for that series. To be honest. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. But I wouldn't have uh, expected. You you said you said Dave Productions will get Sakamoto Days. That's your fair effect. Yeah. I think he'll, uh, honestly, uh, honestly, um, given how, given like how unde- crazy Undead Unluck is as well, um, I, I could see. I do not want TMS in it. I do not want TMS. No, 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 uh, no, just hear me out, hear me out. Uh, I could see Witch Watch going to Dave Productions as well. Because no, Witch Watch. That doesn't feel like as much their kind of series. Well, well, I mean, there is wacky in there, but like. It's more yeah, but it's not like JoJo's or Fire Force levels, right? I feel like, huh? I don't want to say Mappa because I want those authors to, those artists to actually see their family. And... Yeah, and I think they're more combat oriented. I feel like Witch Watch would probably fit more with like, uh, I don't know, either like a TMS kind of studios yeah. or maybe A One. A1 no, no, probably. not. No, no not A one. The fucking A one. They they scrape the bottom of the barrel, and I'm not saying which watch is the bottom of the barrel, but I mean like A one takes whatever the other big studios doesn't have. Yeah, that's kind uh-huh. of what I thought of it. <laughs> Just because it feels like the other studios have like gotten a lot of their stuff, because it's not going to be like U foldable or anything. Can you imagine U foldable. No, that I mean was... I could see him doing like Sakamoto days though. Like that's definitely something. No, like. no, 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 no. Now I definitely, now I definitely want to see you foldable do Witch Watch just for one Have reason. <laughs> what? Have Ninja tweet about it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not have Ninja tweet about it. But ha- have have the have them just go all out crazy on the animation on one particular chapters particular set of chapters you know the ones party chaps what the jeans ones the jeans ones the jean chapters <laughs> that would be absolutely hilarious 
if they just made the the best animation and it's and it's surrounding the and it's surrounding the concept of how awesome jeans are. Like I, I'm joking here, but um, like, wait, what studio did Gintama? I think it was like. Uh, let me check. Uh, 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 produce. Um, studio was Sunrise. Oh, okay. I was not expecting that, but okay, yeah, maybe the then. Studio, to be honest, um, but like, no, watching, watching influencers tweet about fucking Witch Watch and Gene, like we're just watching Ninja. Like, I never thought I'd be so invested about a pair of jeans, but now I got to take better care of my jeans. So I definitely recommend episode 22. Of no, but I can actually see people doing that after the stupid jeans, right? Because it turns out really, like, dumb, but then it actually gets pretty good. And I'm like, why am I enjoying this series of jeans? It's so good. Uh, and I've just got to say, I've just got to say it right, right now. Um, in terms of just, like, um, in terms of just, like, the best um, arc overall for the year, I would say that goes to Witch Watch for its Day of Disaster arc. Reese's Sakamoto stuff is like Fight me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, mean, I don't. Day of disaster. I, well, um, you you read Sakamoto Days Party Jams, don't you? Uh huh. I just said like it's like my favorite in the magazine after JJK. All right, so so I guess you're with Fex on that one. I mean, yeah, but that's kind of a rough comparison because, like, with JJ or with uh, Witch Watch, I will say that the arc was like built up. Like, this was the arc that we've been waiting for. Like, the entire series was building up to it, and it really paid off. I mean, but like with Sakamoto Days, like it's also kind of going through a climactic arc. But the arc that we had right before it was kind of the flashback arc, um, which was good, but I don't think it was. I think Witch Watch was a little bit better, but that's just because the flashback arc just stretched a little. As a whole, I think Sakamoto Days is much stronger, but I mean, that's not really a fair comparison, <laughs> I feel. Um, because Witch Watch, for the most part, just does whatever it wants to do, and then yeah. it gets in the story. And well, I think it paid off, but like Sakamoto's Days, the payoff it's having with its stories is like generationals. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, but I've just got uh, like a. This is just this is just my my uh, this is just something that is my opinion. But um, did 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 Sakamoto days have a moment where it looks like the main like the main like Sakamoto was legitimately going to die? But no. Yeah. So I mean, it was a flashback arc. I just said that, but that wouldn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, yeah, but that that's that's why I feel like uh, Witch Watch kind of has the edge because it was like when you see that when you see that moment when Mori gets um, shot by oh what's his face the 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 guy that I know comes who you mean. Like, yeah yeah the guy that comes in it's just like what like because up until that yeah point, I mean that chapter was absolutely incredible it was definitely chapter yeah, of the week that week yeah up until that point like nothing like that had ever happened in the series and like it it has. It has gotten like the biggest game changer in the series of Le of um, uh, of Nico losing her powers and regressing into a child form. Yeah, so I mean, I will admit that it was definitely chapter of the week. Like it surpassed like everything that week. But as a whole, I mean, the arc. Eh, I mean, some of the fights were like really good, but then others ended like like Rand versus Moy was amazing. But then, like, I think some of the other fights were kind of, like, a little shorter than they should have been. Yeah, um, I'll admit like that. And I hate to keep bringing her up, but I feel like uh, Nemu's fight with K with Kago, with Kago slash Wolf should have, uh, um, versus um, K Kamoe, K K Kogame, uh, should have been a lot, uh, should have been more. We should have seen more I of that fight. That. No, but I will admit the way and they transitioned into the, the side story. Um, with Ur Uran Udan Mirage, right? Randomly, that was like the, one of the best Udan Mirage yeah. integrations in the story. So you know, it, it was still it, a really great arc, it, it, and I think it's a valid arc for like best of the year. So it, it, I don't want to say you're wrong. It did an isekai chap. It did an isekai chapter within the sit within a battle arc. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and also I just wanted to say, like, I was also thinking about the studio that did 
is doing 100 Girlfriends right now, they can maybe do Witch Watch. They're pretty good at doing you gag know, series. You know what? I could definitely, I could definitely see, I could definitely see that. Now that you yeah, know that you brought that up. The name of that studio is like by, by Barry Animation, and it's not one we usually hear about. So they have done some other big stuff though, like um, Quintuplets and Azurlane. So they're not rookies. Um, okay, so yeah, so which watch anime, Sakamoto anime, hopefully we get those announced. But uh, Blue Box, which actually did get confirmed, weirdly, we don't have a studio. And I don't know why, but we don't. Maybe, but maybe, I think maybe, it'll be... maybe it is the foldable that's doing it, and they're just trying to hide it as best they can. Yeah, honestly, that, it feels like I feel like that would almost really aggravate me, just because like the thing with Blue Box is it, it doesn't do as much as sports as it could. Uh, and if it did do more of the sports elements, I think it would be better. But. They're, if you Photable has it, they're going to do those action sequences like so beautifully, and I'll be like, dang it, we're not even going to get most of this. Like, uh, Library, I did not know they were behind. Huh. Really cool. Wait, what? The Grisea, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So I have to get into that series. Yeah, I mean, there are studios that are just, like, underrated that we just don't talk about much, so always good to look into that. Cool. I learned something today filming this. Um, yeah, no, it is weird that, uh, because Blue Box is, like, a staple of Jump at this point, and not knowing kind of um, especially, like, this especially thing. because we knew, like, everyone else's, basically. So I don't know if they're saving that for, like, a Jump Fiesta or, like, some sort of event to announce like the studio behind it really super polished fucking um but I don't think anything like Ufotable fits with this it's another one that would be like an A1 quality yeah yeah it's definitely A1 I think yeah this does feel like A1 or um, overworks um, but you you say you say it's a staple of um, jump at the moment but how long do we have left? That's the question because it's 127 chapters now, and really, the last romance series that we really got was We Never Learn, which was like 180 chapters. I'll be honest with yeah, you; I didn't think it still... lasts this fucking long. Yeah, but they can't really stretch this one. I it honestly doesn't feel like it's slowing down either. It feels like it's doing into sub romances and stories, so it could keep going. Here's how we here's how we stretch it out. We we all polyamory into it. Harem. Um, I I haven't read it since. Um, like honestly, that that feels like how artificially stretched out the series. Um, it's unfortunate because it could have been a like nice short romance manga instead of like nice short sports manga and stretching itself out. In this yeah, but I will admit, at least with the current stuff, uh, some of the payoffs from really strong arcs from the past are coming through. So I can't say it's bad. It's just like, I mean, it's just one of the issues with the romance series. It's like, how long do we have to go before the characters hold each other's hands and then say each other's names and everything? And, and then in this case... Uh, oh, go ahead. I was the last point was just that, and even just say that they're in a relationship to their families. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and that's another thing. And that's another thing as well um, that really has irked me. It's because I've seen people on on um, on Twitter saying like, "Do we have a do we have a better couple than the couple in Nisekoi? Um And I I immediately like my cliche answer is Mission Yosuko family. And you know what? You know what they said to that. Yeah, I don't really like it when when couples immediately get together. That's dumb. And That's then I and then I and uh, let me get let me find the tweet. Uh, uh, let me find I have, it. I have a meme for you when I'm done collecting my rewards on Fortnite on my phone uh, while we're recording. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here it is. Yes, because Mission Yosuko family's main couple didn't have to wait until the end of their series to get together. They were married right off the bat in the very first chapter. The response: I'm far less fond of couples already established. And then, and then I put: So you don't want a couple to be a couple? And they did the face palm slap um, emoji. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are people like 
Well, like Luke from Kindergarten Wars, who likes the slow burn romance. But I personally find it annoying at this point. Like, it's because there's so many of these and we all know where it's going. It's like... The build-up doesn't really mean necessarily as much when there's barely any build-up. Yeah, so, um, I, yeah. Don't, I don't like immediate hookup. On the talk there. Uh, but I also don't like the, the like, it takes 5,000 years to fucking have a romance. I'd like there to be a little bit of exploration. Like, do I actually like this person? Uh, which partner am I going to go with in this, like, 85 different girls that we're seeing in this show or manga, and then, you know, we decide on and I, and I feel like Mission Yosuko could have gone that route, but it's like, no, just get them married right off the bat and focus on what needs to be focused on. Yeah, I think I prefer it this way, but I think it's also because... Like, uh, speaking a bit culturally, like, in my culture, marriage isn't just between the two people. There's also a, a family aspect. It's, like, two families coming together. So I think, like, getting to know, like, uh, the Yozakura family as a whole and Tayo's place in it is, like, an important part of their relationship. So I actually do like the way Yozakura did it. Um, so that is why um, they're, like, my favorite couple right now. Yeah. Um, and also, as well, Mission Yozakura is, like, Pretty pretty interesting year with its time skip. It's probably been like its strongest year so far, even though a lot of people are uh, are debatable about the time skip because of focusing too much on the on the twins on the Alpha and Heel Fumi. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing too. I think the series is at like peak popularity, but um I mean, I do understand people being, like, a little bit confused with the twins, but at the same time, Tayo's story arc is, like, mostly complete. It, it just is. So it makes sense to kind of, like, shift focus to his kids. Yeah. Um, but it just makes sense. But he's still the main character. Like, he's still, because uh, he's, like, the first one that basically unlocked the true spring blooming. Which I mean, I not yeah, but he's also kind of now in more of a, shifting into a mentor position. Which, As I, like, I, which also because like in your video and the review you were talking. Sorry, I don't want to talk about. Yeah, you, go go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say oh. in your review that you just posted, you talked about mentors. Yeah, um, and, 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 so and I still to that point. and I still stand by what I said about Karicho. Even though he has a, even though he has a, a a shitty personality, he's still honestly one of the best mentors in that jump has, has ever had because he knows he knows when to say what needs to be said for any situation. Well, I don't know if I would still put him as the best, but that's a whole. No, no, I said no. Way. I said what one of the best, one of the best. I mean, he's certainly even he's, then. He's certainly a better mentor than, uh, like, oh, what? what he's certainly, a, I, I would say he's a better, me, me, controversial opinion, I'd say he's a better me, mentor than All Might. Mm, also, that is pretty controversial. That's, I kind of agree with that. Um, then again, I fucking... I mean, yeah, I don't disagree with him, but, well, it's a whole discussion. Hey, Tyler, were you saying something? Sorry, I wasn't sure. Oh, uh, no, I was about to say, uh, uh, uh... I also find it fi funny be uh I was about to make a joke about the fact that Tayo and Mutsumi canonically had sex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I could uh, I said this I believe as, yeah I pretty much said this in one of my in one of my uh, videos that that must have been like the most painful experience for Karicho to have to witness. The, the, and you Again, know I don't like the way you phrase that. You know he'd be creeping and peeping though. Like, let's yeah. not oh, even try yeah. to deny it. Like, absolutely, he would be. I could do that better. Even yeah, he, sweet I could just. I could just. I, I could just imagine. I, I could just imagine every every night. Every night he's just being like, "I need to. I need to um scratch steel spider on my face to relieve the pain that I'm feeling right now." Ugh. Ugh. So creepy. Yep. It, yeah, yeah. Like I said, shitty personality, but when pushed comes to solve, he knows what he knows what to say to handle the situation. Like he can, he has some of the coldest fucking line delivery in that series. By the way, like I, yeah. I love him in that regard. I, but I want to I, punch him in the face. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. There's no, there, there's no, there's no denying that. And 
like like I said, like I said, if people like Carriccio for just uh, for his badass moments, because he does have his badass moments, we're not not going to take that away from, not going to take that away from him. Like the like when he literally rides a missile to an a, to an enemy, and then it's just like, oh, time to go, and then and then just witness it blowing up. Okay, that is pretty badass. So if people like him for those moments, I can understand it. I can understand that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. it, it's such a weird concept, though, to think about, like, the characters that have canonically fucked. Because you gotta also come to terms with the fact that out of all of the, out of all of the Disney characters, like, the characters that Goofy is the only one that's canonically fucked. Mm. <laughs> yes! True. <laughs> Um, well, te- well, well, actually, technically, technically, um, we can include Mister and Mister, Mister and Mrs. Incredible in that as well. But they're not like a core Disney character; like, um, they're a movie character. I mean, like out of like the the shorts, like oh, okay, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, those characters, like only only Goofy fucked. Uh, yeah, that. Um. Anyway, I for just talking about like stuff that happened in Jump in this recent period of time, I guess I do want to bring up the uh, Gojo versus uh, Sakuna fight in JJK, which was so crazy. Jesus. Eventually, got JJK trending. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Which, but the discourse, I, I think, is what made it like especially insane. People were memeing like crazy. Yeah, <laughs> just the I'm tired. Yeah. And I, and it's just made me feel again feel like really irritated. Like, oh, Gojo this, Gojo that, Gojo this, Gojo that. Like, just stop it already. You sound like what the author are... of JJK. <laughs> why Honestly, you, why does everybody like this little twink? Maybe it, it, because he's handsome and has blue eyes. Yeah, I mean, that is a good part of it. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> but also, he's really cool. And I did really like the fight. I think it did a good job, like, showing, like, two of, like, the best fighters, like, going at it. I mean, it ended kind of how I expected. But also, I think I'm probably one of the few people who actually really enjoyed the send-off chapter to that fight. Because a lot of people, like, really thought it fumbled. But I don't know. I really just like the way they did uh, the end of the fight. And like setting up what comes after, although they left us on that cliffhanger for so long, just to transition into like one of the goofiest fights in JJK, and it was actually also top tier. So yeah, JJK honestly, has just been well, well. Honestly, honestly, credit where credit is due to JJK because it literally had the balls to kill off one of its major characters. Oh yeah, I mean JJK is not afraid of that. What's going on in the anime? Like my friend, best friend, who's the anime only, he. Is witnessing that right now in the Shibuya arc. Anyway, Tyler, were you saying something? Uh, I was just about to say, uh, all right, crap. I, I, uh, uh about the uh, can... Kenjaku versus or the Kenjaku versus Takapa fight. Ah, uh, yeah. Honestly. I th- think as of right now, I prefer Kenjaku versus Takaba to Gojo versus Sukuna. But, I don't uh, even we'll blame you. It's that. honestly one of the best fights in like the, the magazine, which is hilarious because it's a gag fight. But I, I think Gage should just do like battle gag. He's just too good at it, and it, just like the way like he made Kenjaku, who was like honestly for me not that great of a villain, into like okay, you know what? I kind of fuck with this guy now. I mean, he's messed up, but I also kind of like his style <laughs> of being a villain. And then, of course, like, Yuta coming in at the end. Like, I, as a Yuta fan, I was really glad to see that. Yep. Um, I'm also really scared what Kenjaku's about to do next. Yeah. And honestly, like, I gotta say, talk about just coming in clutch and Managing to like end off Kenjaku, even if it's only for a brief moment. I honestly felt like fucking what watching like I'm just gonna pull a random example out of my ass. Uh, fucking. Uh, 
Uh, that would be like a uh, Beerus from Dragon Ball, uh, fighting Krillin, and being like, "Hey, did pretty good." Like, I don't know. I I I really enjoy seeing like characters that you don't really expect to have crazy amounts of strength. Come in and be fucking nutty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it pretty much is that. And I think that's really nice change of pace uh, for, especially right after we had like Gojo versus Sukuna, which was like a really technical fight. Um, like you really have to be like figuring out exactly the way these guys are using their bullshit abilities. But like with Kendaku versus Takaba or Takaba, whatever. Um, it, it just is about like these characters like um, having like a goof off, and also dealing with some trauma <laughs> somehow. Man, it was so good. But I think I also appreciate the fight more because of recent uh, Jump uh, series show Showa Shoten, which is about like Monsai comedy, written by the uh, Death or drawn by the Death Note artist. Um, and I think that series really made me appreciate Japanese comedy more, so I was able to really appreciate the fight that much more because of that series. So it also was just, I think, good timing. Okay. Uh, so I think we talked about most of the series. I mean, I, other than, I guess, MHA, which uh, it's just kind of going... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just... It, it'll end eventually. Yeah. And we just had, I think one thing I said was, um, there was, a, AFO had like a backstory chapter recently, and I remember thinking, okay, I think this works for AFO as a backstory. That same week, Kagurabachi had like, a, a, their big villain set up chapter, and I'm like, man, I enjoyed this way more than this one bad guy I've been following for years. That's kind of a bad sign. Yeah, and it's just at this point, I'm just like, Please, 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 uh, just get to the final battle, end the series, and have a break. Right again. No, 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 effects, effects. Don't tell people not to write. Put, put the internet out of his collective suffering. <laughs> um... But yeah, no. The other series that just needs to wrap up, though, like... I want it to end so the anime can wrap up so the animators can go home. I want it to end for noble reasons. Not because I hate it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's fair. Honestly. Because, like... Yeah. Did, did you guys see... I, I posted in the chat, uh, like months ago actually or maybe a month ago like the amount of time that mappa gave them to write and animate the Zero movie uh how long six months what yep. they had a six month deadline for that movie to script do the animation and get it out it's surprising how great that turned out it's insane that's why i'm just yeah. like please. And then, uh and then one person thought they could animate the entirety of the Thousand Year Blood War for Bleach. This is only tangentially related, but then when we saw the Invincible, like basically just doing like a core break, and people were like, why did we do this? Is it because you guys kept trying to push for animators to have livable lives? And it's like, yes, maybe. Shut up. Because <laughs> yeah, no, I be don't see, like... They gotta be chained to that death. Yeah, but... Yeah, I don't understand why, like, people, like, when Spider-Verse came out and, and, you know, the animators were saying, yeah, we were not well-treated for this. Like, I swear, I saw some posts like, well, I mean, it turned out really good, so maybe that's okay. It's like, no, that doesn't make it okay. It just does these not. Are the people, these are the people that will simp for their employers while their employers treat them like shit, by the way. Like, 100%. <laughs> maybe, maybe, just if I... 
go the extra mile and work all the overtime imaginable and come in early and suck my boss off, maybe they'll notice me. And then on the last panel, it's just the Arthur Fleck Joker thing. Um, that's literally that meme persona. Like, there, there's no excuse for how animators are treated, regardless of what region of the world they're, they're in. So, like, when they actually get this, like, core break and people are stepping in and like, yeah, get back to work, slave. Like, no, no. We want them to actually be able to live their lives. They're they are human beings just like you and me. Um maybe maybe with a lot more bags under their eyes than we have. Uh, but like still, they're human beings. Fact. We don't want to go back to the era where animators were dying at their desk. Yeah, I mean when Zom one hundred was coming out, if it felt like so it felt like those animators were just like living their lives through what they were making. Yeah, all the shit. Glad is finally uh we're coming out soon. Yeah, I have to finish that up. Like I ended up binging the manga because I was enjoying the anime so much. I didn't think I'd enjoy it, but it was like literally to me as good as like uh high school the dad was when I was I was really oh yeah i am the same way i gotta like binge the manga right after um been, but binge the manga of what um i was on 100. 100 oh okay i recommend it um so one piece how long do you think it has left now i honestly i i'm still on the cusp of like we've got um three arcs after that after after egghead so I have the first box set of my Amazon cart. I'm going by payday. Yeah, so because um, because I feel I feel like Egghead will go on for, I'd say the next couple of months. They say it ends by February and then move on to Elbaf and then find out what the One Piece is and then the final war f- war for the One Piece. So, and that's and that's it. So like what I'm going to do. Um... I want to buy a box set a month and just binge box sets of. Uh, uh, okay. Just uh, like, you know, because that way I'm investing money into it and I'll stick with the thing versus like reading it. I feel like that's okay. the only way for me to actually commit to peace as this massive undertaking. Um. I'm going to regret this financially. I'm well aware of that. Because <laughs> I think, like, we calculated this in another, like, 500 and some odd dollars to buy all the box sets and get current with it. Um, yep. But I feel like that investment will actually make me stick with it for once instead of, like, <laughs> reading it and not finishing it. Um, I think by the time I've finished, I read, like, a volume of manga a day, basically, or sometimes multiple of what I currently am reading. Like, I'm finishing up with Fire Force um, this month as well. I can get the last couple of volumes of that. Um, so I need something new to binge. Um, and figure now's the time to fill, finish fucking One Piece, I guess. Um, so the next box will probably be out by the time I'm done with what's out already. So that'll be something. So stay tuned for me stepping in for the One Piece videos, question mark. I don't fucking know. I feel like that's stepping on some sacred ground, honestly. Um, yeah. But, like, I haven't even told Red this, so that'll be fun to hear his reaction to that when we inevitably uh, tell him the next Chainsaw Man. Well, here's what you could potentially do is just get caught up, then when the series ends, just do, like, a big, long uh, retrospective video. Yeah, like, it would be nice to have any One Piece content on the second channel, I guess, at this point, right? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I think we've pretty much talked about all the current series at the moment, so might as well um, pretty much end this by talk by going over the, ser- the other series that got cancelled. So, like, Ichinose Family's Deadly Sins, that is one of the more interesting ones, because... It doesn't seem like it was an axed series. It kind of naturally ended because even though 
even though I did enjoy like the initial twist of like, oh, okay, they're stuck in a dream, so it's kind of like a purgatory. It just kept on going on and on and on and on and on and on and on with that freaking twist to the point. It's like seriously, how long can they milk this one twist? Yeah, I feel like there's uh something to be said about like a natural ending. Um, so a lot of authors tend to have like the first arc planned and a natural ending to go off of that arc. Like even um Promise Neverland um uh, had that in a way. Yeah. Um, like I feel like Ray was just going to die there at the end, but then it was. Fine. I still, I, I will admit, I will admit, much as I, uh, much as I am a um, still a fan of um, Promise Neverland, I still stand by to this day that that's one of the bu- most bullshit things that happened in the series, if not the most bullshit thing. Um, no, 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 no. I still find that Ray not dying was the most bullshit thing because literally, literally, when I did like very few of that back in the day, I spent like two minutes just going, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, it broke me. I'll, I'll have to get, I will have to get up that clip of, of me, because I've still got it. I've still got it on, it, it recorded and everything. I, I, uh, the ending is what broke me. I'm like, oh, what? mattered, really. Um, and I, I fucking hate that. Uh, but, like, Ray not dying is still back from that. But, like, I feel like that's what happened there. It's like, they just went off of the, like, the, yeah, you're ending off that initial ending. They have planned in case they didn't survive. Um, so that is, um, something that probably was the case. Like, some other series that, and How jump handles things. I I, I never really re- dabbled in Ninja Turtles: Deadly Sins, but I do know uh, it was not the best received out of that batch. Um, from what I've seen online, I don't know if it's like that's just the echo chamber that my social media. Um. I think it started strong, but then the people who were sticking with it were just waiting for it to end. Like, as someone who uh, was keeping up with it weekly. Just because, like Luke said, it just kept doing twists. And even though, like, I felt like the story was making progress with revealing things and introducing new things, at some point, like, when the character said, it's like, yeah, I basically have all my memories back. It's just like, okay, cool. Can we just end this now? And it still took a bit more. (laughs) That's kind of stupid. It is, but I also think it eventually just ended well enough. But to be fair, I, it could be considered an axe because it was not selling well at all. Right. It just wasn't. And that's too bad. I really like the author's one shot. Um, I think maybe they should just stick to one shots for now. Yeah. Or not well, one shots. Um, sorry, short series. That's short series, but uh, yeah, uh, by the same time, if they want to do a long running series. Get a different get get something other than the same the same twist about like oh we're in a dream again oh we're in a dream again yeah no that's that's definitely something that I don't know if it's because I read a lot of comics but I just hate the premise of like the dream world stuff I think everyone does just because the idea of like reoccurring dreams I mean. There is like a basis for it because I have had dreams where I've woken up in my dreams and it's really annoying. But I also it's just annoying to read. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's more annoying to read than to experience. Um, because you you know the logic behind it because you have experienced it. You know? so like, I it might just be the Spider Man uh, slash X Men shit that I've had to read. I've into that way too much. Um, looking at most things involving Wanda. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, like it's gone. It's I hope the author finds success in another series because, like, they have shown at least premise. Uh, Luke's on reactions here. Like, short story stuff might be the better suit for them. Um, then you got like Fujimoto who can do both, and 
somehow both find the love and the hatred of the internet collectively. <laughs> the other ones, though, like, I feel like saying my brain's fried. <laughs> Yeah, we, this is after our game awards recording for those who do want to know. This is hour four almost, by the way. Um, oh, God. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah what else Kite, was it? Fabricate 100. This is the one that uh, both Fabricate. Party Chance I yeah. read. And I wish yeah, this it was really good. Gone. Like yeah, I mean, they just rushed to the end, and I think it's very clear that the author had, like, a plan from start to finish, but, you know, it just didn't sell enough, and that's just kind of it. I liked the power system, I liked what they did with the um, characters, uh, it just, yeah, it just couldn't sell, and so they had to end it, like, like in a rather rushed way. Like, I love the idea of, like, living doll stuff, too, it's a cool one for me. Um, I wish it was sold better because there was like a plan in there that like there there was actual like plot development right up to till near the end, and then they just kind of yeah. And I think that the only real controversial thing I've heard um is that some people didn't really like the idea of Mortsafe, where there's like an or another organization that hunts down the monsters, and now we join it and raise up the ranks and stuff, which I kind of get. It's a pretty big staple. Um, in Shonen series, but I also feel like it at least gave us like a way to kind of power scale like the Fabricants, and it also kind of gave like more supporting cast, which you know every series kind of needs. So I wasn't too against the idea, even if it's a little bit cliche. Um, and additionally, uh, we learned from this and uh, what was the other series called Red Hood. I think that's what it was called. Um, you can't just have a, a big, strong woman and expect the series to survive. It doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> unless, you're new, unless, you, unless you're new, unless you unless you nude exorcist. Give me all the big no, strong like, women. <laughs> but new exorcist, like okay, I mean it is new and it does have a lot of like attractive female, but it's not like a strong woman. It's more like it needs to be a very basic woman. I mean, I love new. She's like adorable. Um, uh, we should actually probably talk about New Exorcist, I guess. <laughs> yeah, very um, brief, very briefly. And there's also okay. like I Ichigo Kids under control, which who ca who cares about that series? I mean, it was funny, but it definitely deserved to get axed. I'll yeah, say that. oh, uh, but I did find absolutely. it funny. Uh, um, but uh, with New Exorcist, basically, if you read a light novel, it's kind of like that, but in a jump manga form. I mean, like the recent chapter, for example. Um, we got a new character, and I was like, okay, probably going to be a girl. And it was, because of course it is. Uh, and then it turns out that girl was the protagonist's sister. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're actually going to get some some backstory for their protagonist, which we haven't gotten in, like, all this time. Like, some hints, but, like, barely anything. So that was nice. But then the chapter, like, at the very end, they said, it's like, oh, okay, we didn't know this was his sister when we added him to the team. Uh, apparently he, she was adapted into the family. And I'm like, oh, adapted sister. I know where this is going. Wait, <laughs> we what? all know where what? this is going. What? <laughs> You've seen the video. You know where this is going. <laughs> Wait, I've seen what? That <laughs> sort of. When there's adopted siblings involved. <laughs> we know. Do -do. But, oh, yeah, wonderful. basically, New Exorcist is very much like a light novel series um, in manga form, but I do enjoy it because it does remind me a lot of, like, Bleach, where you have a, a protagonist who's just kind of fighting spirits, like, at school, and it gets into, like, shenanigans, uh, and it kind of gives me those nice vibes. But at the same time, I think this, like, Kagurabachi, I know the guys are giving some black for it being generic but i feel like new exorcist is a little more in the generic train but its big appeal is just that it has like a fun cast it doesn't have like the most interesting story or interesting mc he's extremely cardboard but he, he's also just I, the series knows what it is and it knows it's doing well in the polls and the sales 
So it can just keep doing what it's doing in, in for its yeah. niche audience. But it's yeah. one I don't think I can easily recommend to other people. But uh, Japan loves it. Like the sh- a lot of authors have backed it. Like the Shangri La Frontier uh, recently said, "Hey, this is a good series." Wait, wait, yeah, wait, 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 wait. and it's a series that I did read for quite a while before I um, put it on hold. So maybe I need to ca- continue Yo, on with it. It finally happened. Henry Kissinger died. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? Henry Kissinger just died. <laughs> okay, this is a weird thing to talk about in our current yeah, stream, like, but like, like it just got pinged in the server. Like I was tweeting a joke T-shirt, and somebody's like, "Hey, by the way, it actually happened." <laughs> okay, movie got back on manga. Ah, <laughs> uh, facts reaction. Okay. Uh, oh, crap! What? What? Why? Why was this? Uh, why? Why was this a thing? Why? Why? Why did this have to be brought up, Vex? <laughs> it just got tagged. <laughs> Someone just tagged you. I need you to know this person is no longer alive. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oh man, people are just celebrating online. Like, why? He's a terrible human being. <laughs> okay. Like I will have the same reaction when Trump dies. So, um. Okay, okay. that was a um, that was something. Um, anyway, Luke. Uh, yeah, New Exorcist. If you enjoyed what you read, I think you'll enjoy what's going on because I think the series had a bit of a rough start because its comedy wasn't that great. I mean, they had like a panty shot that felt like super awkward but they figured out how to do fan service in a way where it's like okay this feels a little more natural and they figured out like the story <laughs> just okay. like the actual story so yep yeah, definitely oh. continue it if it's like your kind of thing but it's not for everybody yeah. like oh. i would easily picture kagura bachi over this but that's a yeah. different story I, um i definitely need to read news exorcist because i i love that kind of story um uh, dueling banjos was yeah if you like trashy fiction like you know who you are it's basically it dueling banjos uh, aside it sounds like it's right up my alley so i'll, I'll definitely give that one um or it but, yeah but yeah i think the only other major thing that we can briefly touch upon because we are going to be doing a separate video on it is the new Dr. Stone chapter that's that came out, which I was an idiot because I thought they were all coming out at the uh, back to back. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. kind of coming out like sporadically. Yeah, but, but um, honestly, I think the next one's like pretty soon. I think, yeah, it's yeah, like not next week, but the week after, I think. Yeah, it's not next week, but the week December. After. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious so, though, like in, in the Doctor Stone stuff, like how far can we really drag this out, right? Is that that's all, the I mean, on. theoretically a lot. Yeah, theoretically, that's... theoretically a lot. Um, but at the same time, I honestly, if they did it kind of like this, like every year or so, every year or so, where they like brought out um, batches of chapters, but spread them out even, but spread them out evenly, I would be pretty okay with that. Yeah, there, there's a lot to explore, but I don't want it to, like, drag on, so to speak. Like, I I respect that we're getting, like, batches of chapters, seemingly. Um, That would be really cool to have, like, four chapters a year or, like, eight chapters a year or something like that. Um, but, Like, n- right now we're dealing with the time travel stuff that was introduced at the end of the manga, right? Yeah. Which, um, which, um, Ann Arbor is not a fan of. Ann Arbor's not a fan of much that isn't Rui Dragon. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> my qu- uh, my question is, is like the big reveal, like, how is this Biarchia? I mean, again, I think we'll have more of an idea in the next chapter, but yeah. it's that's, I think, the driving mystery. Like, is this well, a message from the past? Is it from the future? An alternate um, dimension. Yeah, alternate timelines, which also was brought up. So there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. We just don't know. Yeah, but the one thing I did like about the shots is like we find we finally got the we finally got uh, another ship um, which should have been at the end of the manga with um, Chrome and Ruri. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, it was someone who really liked those two. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I, they got married. Yeah, the only thing now that that I need to be before I'm like 
Dot Stone is pretty much complete for me is Chrome and Sweeker in space. Mm, yeah, you did bring that up. Yeah, they deserve he- they deserved it. They deserve it. Yeah, they do. I'm not going to argue on that, but like uh, we're going to have a more comprehensive discussion on Doctor Stone um, with more chapters out in the yeah. season um, three wrapping up. Which, speaking of which, um, I'm, su- I'm surprised you actually you actually didn't realize that it was going on for eleven episodes. This core party jumps. Yeah, I miscounted for some reason. Yeah, um, which um, I, I think I just did math wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> based on me. so yeah, it, I think you're right. It'll be adapting a little more than we thought, which is yeah. nice. Because based on what hap- what the next episode is going to be, it's going to be the whole battle between Senku and Ibarra. Oh yeah, it is. And so, because we have more episodes, they probably will adapt a little bit more than we thought. Yeah, and yeah. so, I think we'll get like right as either we enter America or like right before. Like I said. feel like it'll be right before. It will probably end with the poker game and the bar scene and the, possibly the but i also think that's kind of just like a, a slightly awkward place i feel like they'll at least like give us like a little bit more just to make it like a smoother transition i mean that's just my thought yeah but feel we'll like see special for this year upcoming year will end up being like the that's the other America. thing though like the boat ride was i think a good time just for filler content because we got to america a little faster than i was thinking i thought we'd have like a whole like like a mini arc but we didn't get that which we didn't need but we could do a, uh, something there. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see when this season ends. Uh, I'm curious, though, like, how is... Because I haven't watched this this core um, yet. Saving it uh, for my partner. But, like, what is the animation quality and acting quality? The animation quality... Oh, the dub? The, yeah. Oh, the animation quality is still, is still pretty good. The dub, okay, there is one... There is one episode where it's not Aaron Desk Deskmu voicing Senku, it's um Matt Shepard who voiced Chrome. He he voiced Senku for one episode, but there is a reason for it. It's because Yeah, um, schedule conflicts. Yeah, it was because Aaron Desmu was at a convention at the time and couldn't get back for the recording. So because they were like, Well, Chrome's out of commission for a while because he's petrified, so we'll just use Matt for this. That makes sense. It wasn't that was that this core? I thought that was last core. No, no, it was this core. It was, um, oh, it was, was it, it was the episode where they're trying to get Gimru to get the lab, and uh, and ends with Suika coming coming out and being like, "Oh yeah, Suika's SSS rank card." Wasn't that last core though? Because no, 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 it was started the, with. No, no, it was the, it was this. Uh, oh. Oh wait, that actually might. No, no, that was that, that was last call. Now, now that you mention it, yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was me. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, but you know, one thing in the dub that I think they didn't mess up, and I don't really consider this a spoiler because it's like a localization thing, but they kind of changed up the way the Medusa's activation works. Uh, and I don't know why, because instead of saying just like you know, um, one meter, one second, or wh- however much numbers you want to go they say affect um something meters th- in about so th- many seconds and i think I that's more to do with, i think that's more to do with a lip flap issue because they got because in in the japanese they go five meters one second something like that yeah one meter one second though yeah i mean yeah but i i don't really like it to be honest because it just the way it comes off, it kind of just messes with, like, I think the concise nature of, like, the activation, and it also just makes it seem like there's a whole passphrase rather than just the input. Um, fair, fair so, I don't really like it myself, but I think it's, like, one of the only real things the dub screwed up. Yeah. Otherwise, but... it's been, the voice acting's been pretty good. Um, and uh, animation-wise, it's pretty consistent. I don't think I noticed too many errors, but I also don't notice those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, unless you're unless you're an absolute unless you're an absolute um, perfectionist, you're not going to notice it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there there's things I definitely noticed in like animation, like there's inconsistency, but like that's not the end of the world for. me. Or anybody I watch anime with, unless it's like really egregious, like nobody's gonna really care, you know. As long as it's not like Dragon Ball Super, Battle of the Gods recap arc or whatever, like nobody gives a shit. Like, um, 
because that's really bad. Yeah, you know? no, I think there's like there might be just like a few awkward moments in like the action, but I don't think it's too noticeable. Yeah, I mean, I will point that out because I did notice that like, comparing with the manga, I think the chase sequences and the intensity was a little bit higher there. But I also feel like action was never like Doctor Stone's strongest no, suit it, to begin with. No, it wasn't. And uh, okay, I also bring up this. Um, I kind I kind of wanted to save a lot of these points for our discussion later, but th- like when Moe's like kicked down that steel door, that was stupid. <laughs> Uh, because like the whole point was that they couldn't get through the steel door, and that's why they knew that um, Hyoga was like safely stocked back there. But he, um, it, bleh, Mose just kicked it down with like no problem, and that's not how it happened in the manga at all. Like Senku just lured them into the room. Uh, okay, I, sorry, I just had to get that gripe out of the way. We'll talk more once. Okay, once yeah, we'll we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk more when we get to. So, like, I feel we also should touch on some of, the, like, the Jump Plus staples here, since we're talking about anime. So, like, Spy X Family and Oshinoko. Uh, Oshinoko just got Season 2 announced, and Spy yeah, Family... Yeah, and Oshinoko is still going really strong, yeah. I will say. Like, we got that anime movie original thing, White Whatever, for uh, Spy Family. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um... Oh, go ahead. So, like, those are the big ones there outside of, like, Don Don getting announced for an anime adaptation. But I feel like Oshinoko... Yeah, and Kaiju number eight will eventually get one. We don't know when. Well, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Um, ma- ma- no, Magic... Uh, oh, it- no, Kaiju did get announced. That's so. Yeah, it got it. We don't know when. Yeah, it got announced. We just, I just don't know when exactly it is. Oh, okay. Sometime next year, I think. Um, but yeah, Maggie Lumiere. Um, yeah, we've got Maggie got Lumiere yeah, got announced. Yeah, I it's like JC staff, so I think that kind of makes sense for the series. They do like Eden Zero and stuff, so I'm definitely going to be pushing people to watch that series because I love it. I need um, to get on that so, one too. Um, absolutely, easily recommended, especially what's what's going on right now. It's like so cool. So, like, um, um, but yeah. Oko. Anime ended at what, like thirty chapters, um, something like that. Wait, sorry, say again. The anime for Oshinoko ended around thirty chapters, in right? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. So like, it, it, like pretty early in. Yeah. Going up and looking. Oh yeah, it's a lot. I think it got an, it got another one today. Uh, it's a good chapter. 130. So we'll get about halfway through what's out right now. Um, basically, like I, I think it'll be in like 30 chapters or so. Uh, this um uh season, my brain's fried. Um, but like there, by the time it finishes airing and getting production, I figure like 70. Which, you yeah, know. but also the manga is like seemingly in its last arc, so I think it'll probably just be over like once the anime is done. Which is unfortunate because I enjoy the fuck out of the series so much. Like, mm-hmm. one of my favorite, if not my favorite thing in Jump Plus, other than Don Da Don. Uh, I'm not counting Chainsaw Man. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think the only reason I don't count it because I think Oshinoko is technically. In Young Jump, in Young Jump Plus, but you know that's a, it. Just gets confusing. It really so. does. Like, I don't want an app for every but, yeah. magazine, but at the same time, keeping them differentiated is like a struggle because they're all they don't they don't separate them. I think Oshinoko in the app, yeah, definitely one of the best. But uh, it, if we're talking Jump Plus specifically, that would probably still be Don to Don. But yeah, I'm also hoping Merit Toxin it's not too far off getting its anime adaptation and same with make the exorcist fall in love i mean those are probably a little too early for their anime announcements but i think next year we'll get those announcements um i feel like the the, the next one and this is my bold prediction um we got announcements coming out for like all this stuff um i figure ghost reaper girl again an anime adaptation 
Uh, that is a bold prediction considering the hiatus it just went on. I mean, which speaking of which, we'll definitely be uh, getting more Ghost Reaper Girl at some point. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was, there was a chance that got released recently for Ghost Reaper Girl. I know the one. To us yeah. Streaming it. yeah, it was very good too. But I, I meant like uh, in terms of like our reactions and stuff because we read some of that on stream. I feel like okay. uh, Make the Exorcist Fall in Love uh, will be another one. That'll be a powerhouse next year. Mm -hmm, sure. um, and for me, it will be Kindergarten Wars. That will definitely be getting an oh, anime. Absolutely, that's going. Oh yeah, for sure. That's selling like crazy. I can't even get Volume One at all. Um, Diamond mm, in the yeah. Rough is another one that I feel like an anime. Well, of some variety. I'm not sure if I can agree with that one because like I'm still up to date with it. It's really good, especially the way it's like ending right now because it is actually ending. But I feel like the fact this ending still kind of an axe to me, and axes don't usually get uh, adapted. I don't know if well, we've ever seen that. Considering considering it's not in like the hot top. Uh, the top forty for hottest um for his, uh, hottest manga. That to me um just says a lot. Yeah, I mean I have seen other people also predict the anime, but I don't. As unfortunate as see it company. I mean I do understand why it's got axe, but it took a while to get good and probably didn't sell as well. So I hate that uh, right stuff anime. I could pre-order shit like months. Ago. Uh, I can't fucking do that anymore. Through the um, yeah, that's what monopolies do. Yeah, um, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy. If my free orders would carry over to Crunchyroll store. They're not listed in my orders. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, I'm just happy that um, I, I'll need to catch up with this definitely. But uh, the one manga series, one of the manga series that I was complaining the most of why it's not on the manga plus app is finally on the manga plus app. Two point five dimensional seduction. <laughs> How censored is? Yeah, when I saw that on the app, I was thinking about you asking for that one. Well, no, because I read like the first uh, volume of it. I was like, okay, yeah, th this I quite enjoy. Yeah, I mean, Dark I'm happy Doctor? he is here. What? How do we feel about Doctor Dark Doctor for a potential anime? Oh yeah, that finally came back. I, yeah, that's a good thing to I, talk about. So that's been I, on hiatus for like months. Yeah, I need back. to re uh, read the latest chapter. Yeah, it it. I'm glad it's back, but it also feels it ended in such a or not ended. It broke in such a, like an awkward place because it was literally in the middle of a fight. So as much as it's happy to get back, it's more like cool. Let's just continue where we left off. So it doesn't feel like a triumphant return so much as we just unpaused. But at the same time, it's not like I'm upset about it because the creator was actually having like major health issues. Yeah. Like, they even specified, like, like what kind of health issues, and knowing what I know, it's like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, now that the back of hi hi hiatus, um, I don't know whether, no, I'm not going to say it because it might be in poor taste. I, I do want to say I'm glad they kept us up to date with, like, some artwork. I mean, I kept reading through those artwork, and I very much appreciated it. <laughs> I, I want but... Dragon back. You know, but I also don't want that author to overextend themselves too much. But it it has been yeah. I feel like you can just you can just do what Chojin X is doing. Just drop whatever chapter you want. Yeah, yeah. Because Ruby Dragon's not like a plot oriented series, as far as I'm aware. So just like drop a chapter whenever people will be like, "Oh, that was nice," and just move on. Yeah, uh, and when it does drop, um, we'll probably be having an arbor just um, posting things that are like it's back, it's back, it's back, it's back, it's back, it's back, it's back. Yeah, uh, and I I'd, I'd love that for you know, like that would be nice to see his reaction to a manga that isn't One Piece or like you know just shitting on random thing number ninety five. Um, yeah, nothing is as good as Ruri Dragon to him. Um, it's it's too. Ruby Dragon to Ann Arbor is what fucking Hunter Hunter is to Red. So, like, that's, um... It gets a little... Speaking of which, I guess we should just, like, quickly bring I, up... Yeah, that in Hunter Hunter, the author did yeah. say that it's like he planned the story's end in case, you know, he doesn't... He's not physically able to continue the series. I'll put it that way. And I have to say, that's, like, one of the most morbid things, like, I've read. 
I kind of respect it in a way, though. Like I do too. At the same time, it's like it feels weird because there's a lot of times, like with George R. R. Martin, for example, kind of outside of manga, like people have mentioned, like, okay, this is an Ultraman writing a s- series that it's like, will we ever see the end? Because what if he passes away before that? But that's kind of like a really messed up way to like look at it, but it's true at the same time. And this is like in Japan, I guess they actually thought of like realistically, it's like, okay, I'm just going to set up the ending just in case. Yeah, no, like actually, um, it, it, the funny thing with because imagine just like drawing something like with the anticipation of, yeah, I'm not going to make it. Yeah, like there, there's been two of these recently, like George, um, Togashi uh, doing that, and like Ozzy Osbourne posted in the music chat in our server. Um, and talked about like he figures he has like ten years max to live left. And he wants to do like one more like show before his health gets to the point where he can't even play music anymore. And he's like, um, I... <clears throat> I don't fear dying, but I don't want to have long term. And, like, I, I relate to that as somebody that deals with, like, chronic pain. Like, I I have, like, my own, like, way out planned if my health gets to the point where I can't have a quality of life, as morbid as that is to think about. Like, when I um had to go through chemo, like, I even drafted up a will and everything just in case I didn't make it through that. And it was really, like, the lawyer looking at me like, what the fuck, you're in your 20s. <laughs> like when I was dealing with that, so like even in at a young age, it has like that like stigma of like what the fuck is going. But I feel like a lot of people don't realize like the actual chronic pain, and it's especially in America, we kind of look at like you gotta work till you die as the mentality. Um, so like when I see people like Togashi, who's a legendary author, or Ozzy, who's like a, a like musician talking about shit like that i'm like i respect it because it's something that i've had to deal with um and i can't imagine like with this particular stuff that togashi has to deal with as an artist and an author it's easy to do it like he created his own like rig basically to help him finish what he's been able to finish um like red tweeted a bunch of shit uh from him like when he first started drawing chapters again uh like he had created like a special table just to be able to write the chapters that will be releasing soon. Um, and I don't know if he's like kind of resigned himself to like, I might not be able to even do it with those circumstances. Um, that's why he revealed this like ending D I believe is what he called it. Yeah. But yep. like, that's something, um, like he created like based on satisfaction of what he could predict for his readers, even like ending A, ending B, ending C, and then this one in case he dies before he makes the end of it. Um, but then you have like George R. R. Martin, like you were talking about, like his page count is still the same as like the last time he revealed the page count. So I don't know what the fuck he's been doing, unless he's been editing it. Um, unless he's been working on a uh, game. I mean, he did do some of the stuff for Elden Ring, so I'll give him that. Um, and he also, like, I guess, helped adapt some of the stuff for House of Dragons, I think. Because uh, he wrote the, the Targaryen book not too long ago, like a spinoff thing that got released before Winds of Winter. I'm like, just like, dude, just finish the, the story that you created kind of thing instead of expanding the lore even more that you'll have to tie into your own franchise that you haven't even finished. <laughs> It just seems like a weird choice to me from the outside. Um, but I don't know what like his plan is for Wins a Winter other than like finishing it, hopefully. Um But like that's something that I figure a lot of creatives um have to come to terms with, right? Like Yeah. Uh Sanderson finished um Jordan's books. Um there's a lot of like the Wheel of Time got finished, you know, that way. Um and now it's got a fucking TV show on Amazon Prime. Uh, Tolkien's estate <laughs> basically finished a lot of the uh, Lord of the Rings expanded lore, uh, which got adapted into another Amazon show. Like, it's weird to think about these things. 
I almost feel like it would be a better option for Togashi to just hand a script to like Madhouse or what's left in Madhouse and be like, here's my plans for what's going to happen. Like you did with the Yu Yu Hakusho. show. Like here, finish it for me. You know, kind of thing. Um, this is a discussion I've had with Red multiple times. Like, what do you think about this? And it's always like a yeah, but no kind of response. Because if uh, it's almost like a stubbornness in Togashi that he wants to finish something on his own. Um, even if he's not physically capable of doing it, it seems like. Um, yeah. I mean, I do respect that also. I mean, it's his, his work at the end of the day. Um, and I mean, as long as he's not pushing himself to the brink of collapse for his work. Well, he kind, of, he kind of already has done that. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's true. Yeah. But... I think we should start wrapping this uh, wrapping this up. Probably. Because... How long has this been going? Uh, but... Hour forty. I think about like an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. Not too so... bad, actually. Yeah, not too bad. So I guess my yeah. final thoughts. Uh, did that... we cover all the X series, Luke? Did we do? All... Uh, yeah, we covered all the X series, uh, pretty right. much. So I think my final thoughts were that um, just. Um, Let's see what's coming next for the Jump series, and hopefully it's um, just as good, and if not better, than what we've seen um, currently at the moment. And yeah, that's my two. That's my final thoughts. So peace out for me. I uh, I know we have a Ruby page for issue one. Um, is that a new series or is that a one? That uh, that's a new series. We at least have one announced right now. Um, Or new series coming in the new year? Um, is there? Uh, not uh, as far as I'm aware, this is the last announced one before the new year. The one that's coming this week. So that's all we know of so far. So we'll, we'll hope for its success, and uh, in the next quarter, we'll talk about whatever comes after that, and probably the end. Of the day and nice and. That's it for me. My brain's done. Uh, okay, and I think for me, uh, just some last-minute quick notes. Um, I am enjoying like the new return from Boruto because we finally got the time skip that we've been waiting for. Um, and additionally, I think there was one other series that I forgot to mention. But where to go? Oh yeah, Elusive Samurai. I really have been enjoying like the recent chapters, like how they kind of remind us that these are real world events and that the these are actual child soldiers that fought in some of these wars. Uh, it really does a good job showing us like the gravity of the situations while still continuing to be like the goofy series it is. And also Jinxai, uh, Jinxai X, like it just sucks. I really hate how far downhill it's gone. I don't even know why I'm even like. I'm barely even reading the series. I'm just looking at the pictures. I'm just scanning through the pictures whenever it comes out. I so yeah, I just wanted to bring up that real quick. Chainsaw Man sometimes. I'm like, I read this in No, but with seconds. Chainsaw Man, at least there's like an entertaining story. Right, I don't no. think Jinx IX, I can't even keep track of anything because I don't care at yeah. all. Yeah, no, but like, it, it's like a 30 second browse the pictures to you and the Chainsaw Man is like a 30 second read to me usually. And then like, I'm analyzing it more in a video. So like I f I feel like sometimes I do a disservice to that series when we uh, record those videos. Time they're still some of the most enjoyable. Content. Um, I hope. Yeah, and do do retry. I mean, it started out strong, ended kind of weak. I I think this is as mean as it might sound. I think this author probably is not one I really am looking forward to ever really coming back because they're no bone collection. This yeah, I don't see them coming out with another successful jump series, but. They probably will still somehow come back. But Fabricant's author, I definitely want to see them coming back. And also Vibration Man. Like, weirdly enough, Vibration Man's cancellation, I think, actually switched me over to, like, Luke's position of, okay, these jumps plus series are starting to get annoyingly short. Because that was, like, Thank the most you. stupid, abrupt acts ever. Like, just as the story was at its peak, it crashed. So, yeah, I just want, I don't have much explanation to the, I'm just mad. I'm just mad about that. So, yeah. Okay, like that's a, a good discussion to have at some point in the new year. Uh, this is going to be like the last video 
channel until the new year. Then, like, the post sword on era of Power Rangers stuff, uh, if it gets for the end of the year. So, I'm going to try and spread these out a little bit. Um, so, I, I'm going to see you all back after the first, outside of the Power Rangers stuff. Until then, stay safe, enjoy your holidays, don't drink and drive, and get home safe. Peace. Peace. Peace.